There's a whole bunch of banks that are insolvent right now. Completely, totally insolvent. Done, board them up, distribute what's left. But there's this government program that says, no, 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 you're, you're fine. You're fine. We'll buy them all. But you don't have the money. Well, well, we'll just make it. Well, if you make it, then what happens to the rest of the money? Well, we'll worry about that later. Welcome to Unscripted Crypto, where we dig deep into the financial realm to bring you insightful analysis. Building on what Mark Yusko just highlighted, many banks today are teetering on the brink of insolvency. But with the government's money printing initiatives, the real question that arises is, what's the actual value of the money we hold? The idea of artificially inflating the economy might seem tempting in the short term, but the long-term implications could be catastrophic. This sets a dangerous precedent, and it's essential to understand what's really at play here. Companies. There's a whole bunch of companies that borrowed at really low rates and levered the crap out of their, that's a technical term, out of their balance sheets. And not everyone, but like, you know, the, the one that I, that I love, and it's not a problem for them, but you know, everyone talks about Apple's cash hoard. They have more debt than cash now. They didn't used to but now they have more debt than cash. And that means they don't have a cash hoard, right? If you owe more than you have in the bank, then you don't have a cash hoard. Well, I'll tell you how. Uncle Warren demanded his buybacks. Mm. So you, good, good Tim, you go borrow money from all the peasants and you give me my money that I don't have to pay taxes on in my beautiful structure. Remember, He's the reason that that bill got passed in the drawda in the lockdowns that said, I mean, I'm not in the lockdowns, before the lockdowns, when they cut corporate taxes. That was that was Uncle Warren. That was not Donald Trump. That was that was Warren Buffett likes to own assets that buy back their stock from him because it it works really well for him because he didn't have to pay taxes on it. Mad genius. Like I <laughs> This is not a criticism of Warren Buffett. It's it's praise and admiration, but the average little guy can't can't do that. And like I said Apple's not in trouble, but they you know they're gonna, eventually someone's gonna have to pay back the debt. Apple doesn't grow. The only way they show growth is by buying back stock and reporting higher earnings per share. But their actual earnings, actual net income is flat and their revenue growth is, is negative. It's only smallly negative, but it's negative. Why would you pay a growth stock multiple for, for negative earning? I mean, negative revenue growth. I mean, you shouldn't. And, and it's not, it's not as dumb as the other ones, but it's, it's 29 times. There is a day in my lifetime where 29 times was unthinkable, right? And that was, that was on earnings, right? That, that 11, 12 times earnings was, normalized in a normal interest rate world. And then we had this pollution, right? We had this 13 year period of zero interest rates where if you take it to a logical, illogical conclusion, if interest rates are zero, if your discount rate is zero, your equity is worth infinity, right? One over zero is infinity. So that, but, and that's where we got this, this craziness, but look, that, Apple's a good company, to your point. They actually make good products. There are a whole bunch of companies. There's this company, Cloudera, right? I don't even really, I should know what they do, but I, I don't actually know what they do. They incinerate cash. They, they lose $200 million every year on a billion dollars of revenue, and yet it sells at 20 times revenue. Forget selling it earnings because they don't have any earnings. And, and the one I love to pick on is C3 AI, right? Which finally did crack, right? This thing, it's ticker symbol is AI. And supposedly they help companies do AI. It's kind of like the company that helped companies turn to .com, I guess. But And this stock was down 75% since its IPO. The shorts were like, these guys have 
50 million revenue, they lose 50 million. They have 100 million revenue, they lose 100 million. They have 200 million revenue, they lose 200 million. That, it's just, I don't know what they're doing with it, but they're they're giving it to somebody. But they they they've they've incinerated 600 million dollars over the last four years. And when ChatGPT came out, because their ticker symbol is AI, oh, I'm buying open AI. Really, really, you bought AI, the ticker, not knowing what company it was because you thought it was open AI. So the thing goes up 400 percent or 300 percent, four times, and now it's finally cracked. And look out below. I mean, the thing's worthless. That company is, the equity of that company is worthless. But I don't know. We're still, we're better in terms of valuing things because interest rates now are, you know, 5% and you got to use a 5% discount rate. But man, there's still a bunch of stupid, stupid stuff out there. Continuing from Yusko's insights, companies borrowing at low rates and leveraging their balance sheets to the extreme paints a concerning picture. Apple's situation stands out in particular. While it's known for its significant cash reserves, the current scenario indicates more debt than cash. But how did we get here? Buybacks, corporate tax cuts, and external influences like Warren Buffett have all played their roles. The Fed committed arguably the greatest policy error in the history of policy errors in 2020. But the point I was making in in the policy error is Stephanie Kelton convinced people that you can print as much money as you want out of thin air and there are no consequences if you have the world reserve currency. It's just a dumb theory. Um, Although Guy Swan was great. I said, you know, she was the dumbest person that, that, that I can think of. And he said, no, no. We're the dummies. She's super smart. She convinced us all to do this. I'm like, oh, that's an interesting point. And and they're trying to reverse it. M2 has basically grown at 7.5% over the last 40-odd years. I mean, that that's a crazy number. Right? Everybody talks about inflation's 2%. No. 7.5% money growth means, and that's why houses cost what they do and no one can afford to buy a house and, and why cars cost what they do. Crazy. A friend uh, of mine's daughter is getting ready to go to college. And he said, WNL. And WNL is a perfectly good little school. I mean, it is little. I mean, it's small. I shouldn't say little. I mean, it's a small school. Perfectly good. Perfect. I'll ask you, how much do you think their tuition is for a year? Tuition, room, and board. $83,000. Yeah. That's when I went to college... It's $11,000. Now look, I'm 100 years old, but no, no. I mean, that wasn't, that was 38 years ago, but 11 to 83 is more than 3% inflation. Like orders of magnitude more. But the point is that 7.5% went to 40, right? They printed the same amount of money in an 18 month period in the United States than the previous 247 years. The Federal Reserve's policy decisions in recent years have been nothing short of controversial. Their balance sheet has expanded exponentially, leading to significant concerns about future economic stability. As Yusko pointed out, inflation rates and the increase in money supply aren't aligned with the figures that are often presented to the public. From education to housing, the cost of living has skyrocketed, making life increasingly challenging for the average individual. In conclusion, Understanding the interplay of banks, companies, and the Federal Reserve can offer insights into the potential economic scenarios we might face in the near future. The question is, are we prepared for what's coming? We'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think about the current state of our financial institutions and their implications for our future? Share your insights in the comments section below, and let's get the conversation started.